Well, thanks. Okay, I'll call the March 6th, 2017 meeting of the Finance and Personnel Committee to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alder Bussey? Here. Acting Mayor Wood? Here. Mayor Miller is excused. No. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the February 20th meeting? So moved. I will second that. Any changes? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 The minutes are approved. Uh, appearances, we have none. Unfinished business, we have none. Um, 6A, under new business consideration of resolution 17-3-2152, purchase approval of one wide area writing mower. Mr. Anderson. Good evening. This was a, a capital budget equipment replacement purchase, um, replacing a 2010 John Deere wide area mower. Um, had a lot of problems, was out for most of the 2016 season, uh, replacing it with a, a Tier 4 compliant Toro wide area mower, um, basically identical to one that we already have. This one would be have a cab on it that would stay all season long and then includes a broom for winter use to um, allow us to be able to broom off our, our city sidewalks and then have our John Deere with a broom as a, as a backup or in addition to for the additional park sidewalks that we've developed over the last couple of years. Okay. Approval. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion <coughs> carries. Uh, 6B, consideration of resolution 17-3-2156, award for bid for 2017 Parks Engineering Services. Sure. We had five projects that required engineering for this year and wanted to um, include them together. Um, some of them had similarities, uh, more just on an ease of working with uh, one firm for all of them, and uh, we issued an RFP with those that had direct experience with park projects and uh, based on the um, response to the RFP and the criteria um, I am recommending that we go with the um, heirs and associate bid was low of the three firms that completed an RFP okay and approval second and Jake this is under the budgeted amount correct correct yep <coughs> Uh, just one note in the resolution, AYRES is spelled incorrectly. It should be A-Y-R-E-S. I think it's in there three times. So. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. Is there an amount over which we're supposed to do roll call? 25000 Okay, well... We can go back and do a roll call through Kirkland. Yeah, that's okay. okay. We can, we'll, I'll catch it the next time. Pardon yeah. me? For no. Council. I think it's more important for council. Yeah. 17, <clears throat> or excuse me, 6C, consideration of resolution 17-3-2157, approving a facility use agreement with Monona Grove Youth Football. Sure. You guys are going to be seeing next couple of meetings, updating our facility use agreements with long standing groups that utilize our facilities. Um, this one is with Monona Grove Youth Football who uses Hawk Ride Field at Ahuska Park. And it's uh, Park and Rec Board recommended this approval of an, a 15 year agreement. Okay, Alder Bessie. So uh, how are the, the amounts, um, and you can speak to the other um, use agreements that are coming up, how, how are they determined? Sure. Um, it's based on the number of total events that they're having reserved there, um, some historical payments that have been paid to the city in lieu of. Um, youth football is, for example, is a minimum of $700 or $10 per player. So um, if they get 90 to 100 players, it'll be closer to 1,000. We try to use what the per per game fee would be and keep it in line with that um, depending on you know are this is an exclusive Monona you know base group or not so um, the other ones are a little bit different Monona adult softball um, the fee is it's close to ten dollars a player I guess but uh, we have more direct cost with the uh, 
the maintenance of the field and an actual baseball diamond and the lining um, than we do with the football uh, program. So each one is treated a little bit different based on what the existing you know, per game fee would be and what some of these groups are willing to do as far as their end of the agreement. So for the youth football, the per game fee and, and compared to other communities would be? Um, so the per game fee for like our football field is $150. Um, and then if you have us line it, it's $250. Now youth football has always lined their own field. Um, so they maintain kind of the hash marks and the end zone lines. Um, we'll maintain those for our program or other groups. And compared to other communities? Um, it's in line. Some some charge a little bit more. Some charge a little bit less. There's, we have a, a fairly significant edge in field condition um, versus other 7th and 8th grade programs. Some utilize their high school fields, which they don't have to pay you know, rent because they're either part of a school district program or they have other agreements. Mm -hmm. um, this is in line with it, kind of what we're looking at is uh, for a youth, Monona-based youth program is either that $10 per player um, fee or kind of a minimum bench benchmark that helps with our maintenance needs of that particular facility. Thank you. And the 32 games per year that are listed, was that just for the current Monona Grove? youth football or does that include another sure so program? currently the youth football is seventh and eighth graders and they play up to 16 games per year um, as the co cooperation with the peewee football which is fifth and sixth grade um, if that program were to come out to a huska and they would become all one minona grove youth football organization then that would allow for the fifth and sixth graders to play there as well so while it's they currently play at the high school um, we anticipate within the next 10 to 15 years that that may not be the case, that they would be joining us at Ahuska Park. Okay. And this is a 15-year uh, agreement, uh, but it does have a 30-day termination for, cause, for no cause by the city? Correct. Yep. In all of our facility use agreements, we have a 30-day termination policy. Okay. Move approval. Second for the discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 6D's consideration of resolution 17 3 2158, approving a facility use agreement with Monona Softball Association. Jake. Um, same type of agreement with softball, um, the long standing. The agreement has been that Monona Softball um, did not have to pay field rental fees and they would provide um, their own ball diamond grooming services for those fields and also for other city fields. As we um, acquired new equipment for ball diamond grooming and acquired um, more activities within the, within the department, um, I wanted to make sure that was a city employee doing the grooming covered under our insurance while they're using our equipment. Um, and so those fees that typically are that, that fee that they would pay for the materials and, and the personnel to drag the diamond were now paid for in the form of a rental fee. Um, so the softball association will pay $4,000 to the city um, and, and a portion of that includes a payment of the pool netting um, project that will be happening this year as well. And this is a one year agreement. Um, a little bit more to year to year depending on what happens with funding for a capital budget that may include Winnicott Park master plan next year um, those plans that might affect the softball complex and would be um, incorporated into a longer term agreement okay um, <clears throat> they have two tournaments a year and um, they serve beer at those correct and do we know City clerk, they get their licenses, yes, right? They was, do. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? Um, move approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion is approved. 6E consideration of resolution 17 3 2159 approving a facility use agreement with Lake Monona Sailing Club. 
Jake. Sure, Lake Monona Sailing Club is an update to their previous five-year facility use agreement. This is um, a recommendation from staff and the Park and Rec Board for an additional five-year using the uh, $25 per year escalator in rental fee. Uh, the group's been excellent to work with um, at Stonebridge Park. The pier is removed um, and installed by the club off-site, and they do volunteer maintenance as part of the facility use agreement. Okay, and then <clears throat> I know years ago they used to store the pier in the park, but that doesn't take place anymore. Correct. Yep. Okay. Um, no questions. Move approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 6F, consideration of resolution 17 3 2160, award of bid for. Reconstruction of Winnicott Park Tennis Courts. Okay. Sure. So the courts at Winnicott um, are within that kind of 20 year anniversary of when a complete reconstruction is needed. The cracking in the courts is significant uh, to the point where basically all the asphalt has to come up and, and get relayed down. Uh, we have 50,000 in the 2017 capital budget. We received six bids. Um, with a low bid being 60609 the high bid was I think 73000 so it was a pretty accurate spread um, for the project as far as a, a good amount of bids that looked at the proposal. Um, from the time that we requested funds, there was a little bit of a change in the DOT specs for asphalt that could have influenced some of the price. Um, and then just the bid climate, I think this year we're seeing not as favorable bids um, so <coughs> we reviewed the bids and recommended from staff. It has not gone to park board yet um, for the low bid of Wolf Pavey to do the project. And then in the fiscal note, it has the additional funding sources. So can you walk through the additional sources? Are these um, hard numbers that we have? Uh, for example, the security cameras and the yeah, uh, I can tractor. Walk yeah, the, so the security camera, which is on the Fireman's Park, um, came in at twelve thousand dollars. It was eleven thousand and some change. And we, uh, they had a couple. They had some time there to get it to twelve thousand dollars with uh, uh, some other costs, miscellaneous costs. So, the, so there's actual savings um, of three thousand dollars there. The Ventrac compact tractor that's been purchased already. Um, that's that. That was uh, paid off. I mean, it's paid and closed out. So there's a savings to the 27, 2754. Um, the mower, uh, there is a savings. Um, so what I would do here, there is a savings of six over six thousand dollars, almost. I think it's eight thousand dollars when you include the trade in. Um, so what I do is I would include the trade in for now, a portion of it. Because uh, the trading goes to the general fund, and if at the end of the year, I think if we had money left over in the capital projects, we move all the trade in over to the to the general fund. But as for now, um, I just included a portion of the trading with the savings from the more to get to that twelve thousand dollars. So these are actually hard numbers, in because um, two of the projects are completed and the mower is just being purchased. So, Jake, big picture grand vision for Winnicott Park. Are these um, tennis courts going to remain there or is there, I remember seeing something that had like a splash pool. Of, yeah. What, I, what's the master plan? I think long term is that tennis court area will probably be some part of the outdoor pool um, admission area if we do an extension of the shallow end to include zero depth. Um, we had looked at that 30-year mark of the pool being 2023, uh, which is six years away. I, I'm confident that um, given the amount of uh, support from the council and maintenance and maintaining the pool, that we can stretch that out. And, and so I, I'm looking at this as a 10-year type of plan for the courts, resurface them now, get 10 years out of them, and that's probably about the time that we're looking at a pool renovation. Do we need to... The, the scope of work that's been specced, do, do we need to do all of it if we're only going to extend the life for another 10 years? Yeah, I mean, it's it's basically the, the asphalt with the cracking that we have now, there's 
really nothing more that we can do to band-aid it any type of fill crack or or patching will just seep out of it um, according to the contractors that I talked with so this is a a fairly basic type of you know tennis court reconstruction with um, just doing a little fine grading on the existing base underneath putting um, three and a half inches of asphalt down and color and lines you know, a Husqa, you see people all the time, mm -hmm. but not here. How come? Well, I think part of it is the the condition of the courts. I mean, we run our lessons from there in the summer. Okay. Uh, we're running 70 to 80 kids. One of the things with this is we're putting in um, uh, pickleball lines, and so that's been one of the hot upcoming programs with um, the baby boomer generation. So in coordination with the senior center department, we're going to be running some uh, adult pickleball programs and leagues so I, I would anticipate you'll see a lot more use once this project's completed yeah thank you yeah the last I mean I haven't looked at it closely in a, in a year or two probably but it was already the cracks were pretty wide and heaved up yeah I'm surprised anybody would play on it frankly but. no it's it, even even with our lessons it's just it, it, they're not good yeah. but but in I had, yeah, I had the same question though about what about the pool future of the pool. Yeah. But, um, move approval. Second, would the clerk please call the roll? Alder Wood. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> Acting <laughs> Mayor Wood. Aye. Alder Bussey. Aye. Do I get uh, increased pay if you're going to call me Acting Mayor for I one know. night? I don't know what to call you. We'll vote on that. <laughs> we'll vote on that. Yeah. <laughs> You're not it's not on the agenda for tonight, though. <laughs> it's not on the agenda. Darn. <laughs> okay, I think that's all the park stuff, right? Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. <laughs> I was told this was going to be like a light agenda. Yeah, we heard that. Okay, 6G consideration of resolution 17 2 2153 award of bid for. City Hall Administration Offices Remodeling. Okay, um, this is part of the uh, budgeted project where we're going to create uh, some new offices in our uh, administration section and swap some of the offices actually around, creating a record storage room. And um, it's been reviewed uh, at the facility committee and as I said, it's part of the budget. As the project we estimated was around $50,000, we had to send it out to bid, and the low bidder is KSW at $44,285. And uh, I did review these bids with uh, Dan Stefani and Brad Brune, and um, it does leave us some extra funds for our shelves, which was also part of the project budget. Um, with some of the savings, I might look to later to to invest in a little bit of office furniture for mm -hmm. some more modular um, settings in the end so that we can have some interns and um, our code enforcement uh, officer there without uh, bumping into each other too much, um, as has been the case. Could you just, and I know I think this was not part of the, the original packet, but yeah, did isn't you it? Did you get the, um, Leah said she tucked them into your packets, so did you? Uh, I got it, yeah. You got that? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> um, there's the document called City Hall, City Hall Administration Office Remodel. Could you maybe just talk a little bit more about what is being done, a little more specifically? Sure. Um, actually, this, this project, um, I'm not sure exactly when it started, but it predated me. Um, but we we did a little bit of uh, re-envisioning of it. Um, where there are currently filing cabinets, um, there's actually six large cabinets that we were able to purge all of the contents of. And we'll reuse those filing cabinets and hope to get rid of all the file drawers that are in the space. And where that will be will be two offices, one for the personnel director and one for um, the public works project manager and then the room at the end will be kind of open and that's where um, actually Leah is right now and hopefully like I said we can have some space where we could have some small meetings or some interns so a very flexible type of space 
where the public works uh, project manager's office is now is going to be where the records room is that was originally slated for actually my office but it seemed to me to make more sense to put it in that office because it's windowless and then we can run the shelving all the way up to the ceiling mm -hmm. and where the records room is now which is in the middle we'll make that into a break room which if you've seen our break room it's pretty much one chair <laughs> so it really is not a break room to speak of and there's also no break room on the other side for the police either and the reason why we chose that room is because in my office there is a, a sink and so there's plumbing there. And then what we'll actually do is flip that around so that it will service the new break room without having to install the plumbing in that in that area. Um, so it's it's fairly extensive. Um, and so, like I said, so far we've we've had a file purging party so that we have a better sense of what we actually have to move into this new records room and we're going to create some new property files so I think it's going to be a really nice functional space for everybody and it's going to solve a lot of multiple issues so okay. Any questions second would the clerk please call the roll acting mayor wood <laughs> aye alder Bussey. aye Six H consideration of resolution seventeen dash three dash twenty one fifty four approving an intergovernmental agreement with the village of McFarland for building inspection services. Um, this and uh, the next item, which has to do with the um, property maintenance enforcement services, um, also known as our code inspector, they they sort of go together. Um, we heard from McFarland that they're interested now in picking up some of our code inspectors time in a joint sharing arrangement like we have with the building inspector so while we were at it looking at that agreement we decided to just clean up a little bit some uh, outstanding issues with the building inspector uh, agreement because it's been you know amended a couple of times so just some very simple things um, one community will provide the phone for the code inspector the other will provide for the building inspector so we won't have the cost sharing um let's see here and i think that's about it for the building inspector so like i said just a just a couple of cleanup items since we were already at it tweaking the agreement and we just took the exhibit a out because i think we're all comfortable with the program now and how the costs are broken out and so forth otherwise nothing really has changed okay and that, that has, has worked well with the village of mcfarland good working relationship yeah it really has worked well with them so um we're glad to work with them on the, the property maintenance person because you know it's very hard to find that that type of um, person as well and he's been working out real well for us so um, so we're looking forward to continuing that relationship okay and for both this position and the code enforcement position those are those employees are each will be employed by the city of Monona and then McFarland will separately employ them as their employee as well so. for the code inspector um, each uh, each entity will basically retain the services uh, for the code inspector separately, but that position's a little bit different because it's part time, you know, without the full okay. benefits like the building inspector. So we decided to set that up a little bit differently. Um, and just some, you know, very simple language about, um, you know, when he's in McFarland, he's following McFarland's codes. When he's in Monona, he's following Monona's codes. So that part pretty much mimics what we do for the building inspector right now. The building inspector is full time, and the benefits are divided in half. Is that? Yeah, they're they're basically split. And currently, so. he's, he's on McFarland's payroll. And they pay everything. And they bill us. They split the bill every month with the benefits, salaries. Um, they give us a detail of what it is. So would the code enforcement exceed 30 hours between the two communities? Uh, we don't expect them to, but um, with the hiring being separate, it, it kind of lessens that chance because then it gets a little more complicated. If, you know, they... 
<laughs> there's an agreement between two entities to retain the services for somebody and they're splitting the cost, could it be viewed as a way to skirt having to pay benefits? Well, I believe, let's see, how do we state this exactly? And I know we're not on that one yet, but. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it is something that we looked uh, carefully with the WRS into um, before we kind of went down this road. And um, let's see. If you got it covered, I'm comfortable. But it's yeah. Just, um, let's see here. The only two entities decide to hire somebody and split the fee. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that we're really saying that's shared is any costs related to, like, certification or training. Um, and that's pretty much it. And that, you know, if we won't step in each other's toes with scheduling and so forth, but... Um, the property maintenance inspector shall be considered to be employed separately by each party and shall be an agent of the village of McFarland when acting for McFarland. So, I mean, it does spell out that, you know, it is a separate arrangement. Um, approval on the agreement with the for building inspection services. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Six I consideration of resolution 17 3 2155, approving an intergovernmental intergovernmental agreement with the village of McFarland for property maintenance enforcement services. We'll talk in a second. Any further discussion on it? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right, motion carries. <coughs> Six J discussion of proposed recodification amendment regarding payment of claims as a condition of licenses or permits slash appeals. This one, uh, since we're on the topic of building inspection, um, was actually brought forward from our building inspector. Um, he had suggested that we look into whether or not um, if an entity is delinquent in any kind of payments or fees to the city can we withhold building permits so we took a look at the um, ordinance on that and uh, this has been done along with bill we did some cleanup of the language to just clarify you know that that would be the case um, apparently they've got a very, very expensive issue going on in McFarland um, because they were not able to deny those building permits to a person that you know literally owes them many thousands of dollars so we just thought it would be a good idea to be making sure that um, we wouldn't have a similar situation happen here you know it's one of those things that's not a problem until it's a problem and and then we don't have a any kind of enforcement tool but this is just a little bit of a clarification um, and this would go into the recodification packet um, I'm not 100% sure that it will still make it in time, but it, I, I have a feeling it will be. So so I would just send that along, and if it's too late, then I'll have to bring it back, and we'll have to pass it separately. So this, if, they, if a person is delinquent in some personal taxes, mm -hmm. um, but they have a separate business entity, that wouldn't prevent the business entity from getting a license, would it? Oh, let's see. I gotta reread how that was. Uh, that was specifically a one part we take took a look at. For any, it's under section B on that second page. Um, if you're looking at the redlined copy, it's probably the easiest one. That was the one that got snuck into your packet. <laughs> For any person or business delinquent in payment. So that was one of the clarifications that we made. Right, but if it's a if it's well, the cop. So the red line is what actually should be in here, correct? That's what we're. Yeah, that that's having. that was okay. the thing that got missing in your packet. So yeah, it's easier okay. to follow yeah. the red line there. So, but that still doesn't really answer what what I'm asking is if you have an individual who's delinquent in taxes or they get a forfeiture for something disorderly conduct or mm -hmm. smoking marijuana or mm -hmm. 
um, but they have a separate business. The business could still get a a permit or a license, correct? That's a really good question. Any person or business. Hmm. I'll have to get some clarification on that. Because if you read it, it says any, if you would read it like for any business who's delinquent in payment of any forfeiture, businesses don't really get forfeitures, correct? I mean, that would, that's really only for people? Mm, they probably could. Mm. I, oh, we're not voting on that tonight, right? So nope, nope. We um, are here about yeah, it says taxes of any taxes. That's it. That's listed actually separately. Right. Um. So. Oh, go ahead. Hmm? Say that again. Mark? A bar. I mean, if you get arrested for a bar, at a bar, it could be fine. So there is. That's uh, true. I'm not sure if though if they issue. Usually, those are issued to individual. I'm sure. Like the bartender who's there or the manager. But there are certainly situations where they would be delinquent in taxes, potentially, um, or have a forfeiture for something else. So maybe we could just ask Bill before yep. the next meeting to clarify that. You betcha. Yeah, I'd like to. What is that where we just um, move this to count? Or Sure, that's fine. Uh, what, what, what am I struggling with? What's the <laughs> is this on the council agenda also? Oh, it is, yes. Without, uh, okay. Yeah, um, without recommendation. No recommendation um, to council. I move with no recommendation. Move it on to council. I'll second that for the discussion. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. Aye. So let's move on to council. Okay. Uh, Item seven, this acceptance of general fund accounts payable checks dated February 17th to March 2nd, 2017. <coughs> okay. There's not a lot of stuff um, during this time period, but just a couple of big things I kind of want to hit on. Page one, uh, you'll notice there's three, Dane County, Madison Schools, and Manola Grove Schools. So basically this is their portion of what we collected from January of property taxes. Uh, we pay that over at, on the 21st over to these entities. Um, where is that? There's not a lot of stuff. Page, uh, page six. Uh, this is kind of talked about with Jake's, the Ventrax, Madison Power Center. The Ventrax attachment. This is part of the capital purchase. Um, the overall came in, at, I think, roughly $2,700 under budget. Uh, with that, um, page nine, um, Beer Becker, um, they're finishing up some uh, Schluter Beach improvements, which should be finished this spring. All of it uh, underneath that, W. Davies, uh, they are doing the senior center remodel, which was a another capital uh, approval um, in 2017 budget. This is the uh, kitchen remodel. So this is a kind of a down payment. Um, page 12, it's a one-time fee for City of Sun Prairie, MP, SI, NPS uh, membership um, that we have. It's a one-time uh, fee that's budgeted each year. Um, page 14, uh, January IT service, land tech, uh, 5100. Um, just one of those things. Um, and that's all I have. If you may have any questions. Do you have anything else? Uh, move approval of the accounts payable checks dated February 17 to March 2nd, 2017. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.